What's going on guys? Um, if you follow my channel, you might know that uh, I'm working on a Journey arcade machine. And um, but what you might not know is, is that I do not have the uh, cassette tape uh, or cassette tape player or the cassette tape interface board. A cassette player interface board. <coughs> but um, necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> this has already been invented before but it's very expensive and I figured out how to do it really really super cheap and I'm going to tell you guys how to do it yourself on the cheap okay now um, what this does is this will work on just about any arcade machine that has a cassette tape or an 8-track player in, inside it but in this predicament I, um, I made this work with Journey okay now the, the cool thing about this is this cost me a grand total of seven dollars except for the um, uh, jump drive which I mean what is that five bucks the most um, so uh, the parts I used here is a um, car relay okay and a two dollar mp3 player from eBay okay now you can use something called an mp3 trigger which will basically do the same thing but that MP mp3 trigger is fifty dollars plus shipping so I'm not gonna do that. I'd rather spend the seven dollars, and and I'm gonna and I want I wanted to make something that is read 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 bleh, readily available, um, that you know so anyone can get it or I can get replacement parts or whatever. Okay. Now the way this MP3 player works is as soon as power is applied, it plays the first song, and then it tries to go to the second song. And since there is no second song, there's only one song loaded on this, which is the song that comes with, on the Journey cassette tape, the loop tape, it continuously plays this same song over and over and over, just like the loop tape would, okay? So, um, anyways, on the Journey circuit board, there you have a little, a little header, okay? And one of these pins uh, in the schematics is labeled cassette player on, okay? And when the board calls to have the cassette player play, it puts five volts to one of these pins, okay? And the way this works is it supplies five volts to a MOSFET, which then switches this, this big giant relay, which then connects your power to your, uh, which, uh, to your speaker. So this is con con continuously playing at all, at all, all times. So it's it's random when it starts up. It's not going to restart the MP3 every single time. And you know, because I'm sure if you're not a good player, you'll never hear the end of the song. But uh, okay, so let me give you a little little demo of what this. I'm going to flip the speaker upside down because it's kind of loud. I'm going to connect this to five volts. I already have five volts right here. And you know, so I, so this would turn on when it when it, obviously when the board calls it to be on, and turn off obviously when it calls it to be off. And when I reconnect it, it's in a different different location, of the song. So it's not constantly restarting in the same spots. Anyways, the the reason I went with the giant relay is because with Journey, I I have some ideas. Um, I'm thinking about not just switching this speaker but possibly switching lights or something else so in other words maybe get um have you ever seen on a pinball on some pinball machines there's that little tiny projector light i could put some of those somewhere and have those light up when, when it plays the music i don't know I'm, I'm just thinking i don't know but okay let me let me show you guys how to do this yourself let me explain a little bit on how it works it's a very very simple simple schematic actually okay the connections we're gonna need is T for trigger a ground plus 5 plus 12 and you're gonna have your speaker outputs now this puts out 2 watts now 2 watts is actually plenty believe, believe me um, to run to run your 6x9 on the top of your cabinet now um, what this is what this is doing is I have 5 volt and ground you're going directly to the MP3 player, and as soon as the MP3 player boots up, it starts playing the song. Okay, but I have it going through this diode, 
And the reason why I have it going through a diode is because um, this diode, when, when voltage goes through a diode, it drops the voltage, about half a volt, maybe 0.6 volts, something like that. And the reason I wanted to give this a little bit less voltage than, than 5 volts is because this thing is rated at 5 volts. And you may turn your power supply to get 5.5 volts, maybe even 5.8 volts, just to get the correct voltage on board. So in, in this predicament, since this has ver takes very little power to run, you may get a full-fledged 5.8 volts to this MP3 player, which would cause it to fail prematurely. So that's why I have this here. And uh, in this predicament, uh, it's, this may not be necessary, but I put a 220 microfarad capacitor right across the power. And that's just because this is a cheap design, and uh, I want to make sure it has enough power for when the base hits, because I don't want any um, any clipping or anything like that. But okay, so you have 5 volts coming from the board. Now you may think, why not just have that 5 volts go to a 5 volt relay? And just trigger that without all this MOSFET crap, right? Well, you can't. Um, and the reason why is because your 5 volts that would drive the coil in your relay would be too much current to, to, uh, for, for the chip that's, that's supplying it. So in other words, you don't want to wear out the chip that switches that 5 volts prematurely. So, uh, what this MOSFET is for, this is an, I'm using an N-channel MOSFET in this situation. Um, this MOSFET is going to do all the switching for me, okay? Now, with a MOSFET, I used an IRF640, but you can use pretty much any N-channel MOSFET, as long as it'll switch this relay, which is pretty much any <laughs> N-channel MOSFET. Okay, so, the, um, I have 5 volts coming in here. Okay, that's going to the gate, which is basically connecting the source and the drain. And when this 5 volt is off, when, it, when it's no longer calling for the song to be played, there's a resistor that actually brings, brings the gate to a ground. It grounds out the gate so the MOSFET is not stuck on all the time. Okay, uh, so what else here? Also, you know, what, you know what, think of a MOSFET, which by the way stands for Metal Oxide Semiconducting Field Effect Transistor. Uh, think of a MOSFET as a water faucet, okay? Now, to control that knob, the valve, to turn it off, on and off, you have power going to the gate. This is just to control the MOSFET, okay? And the source, um, I'm going to try to make this simple, okay? Let's, just, let's, let's pretend this is our water supply, and this is our water coming out the drain, okay? And this gate is going to control that. Well, anyways, now we have an, an energized coil when this is on. Okay, now um, uh, when when you shut the when you shut the the machine off or when you shut off our trigger voltage, um, it will create a back electromotive force. So in other words, if you put 12 volts uh, positive negative right here, when you turn it off, it's going to switch it for a split second and deliver 12 volts backwards. Okay, and it's called back electromotive force. It happens when the when a magnetic field collapses. Um, anyways. You don't want that, okay? Uh, because that could possibly damage your MOSFET. So it's really simple. You just put a, a diode across across there. Um, and then it'll basically short out uh, the back electromotive force, and that goes to 12 volts. 12 volts goes directly to your uh, relay. Now, you know, here's something: if you if you plan on doing something like this yourself, um, go to AutoZone and get a cheap get the cheapest relay you could find. I mean, this thing's rated 40 amps. This is this is overkill of a relay, but uh, anyways, the cheap relays will say uh, uh, there'll be numbers on the bottom, and it'll say 85 and 86, and you know the numbers on the bottom that'll be your coil, and 30 and 87 will be your normally open contacts, okay? But uh, yeah, so when that hits, it moves the uh, the contacts in this relay, which will basically connect the sound to your speakers. Simple as that. But uh, yeah, tell me, uh, give me some comments down the bottom, tell me what you think. Does this help anybody out? You know what? No, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Okay, um, there are, there are other games that have, um, multiple tracks, okay? This, this is only good for one track. If you want multiple tracks, I suggest you buy the $50 MP3 Trigger by, I believe it's called Spark Fun, the company that makes it. It's, it's a little, it's a little, like, a little pricey, but some games have different tracks, like, um, I think, I think the game's called Shark Attack, where it has like a talking track, and then when the shark touches the people, it has a screaming track, and so on. Um, if you want to switch between tracks on the fly like that, 
I suggest you get an MP3 trigger. Or you could possibly, if you want to save money and have two tracks being powered, you could get two of these and uh, make and just double the circuit. But uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, let me plug this up one more time. If you guys like this kind of stuff, if this helped you out, uh, hopefully this saves somebody some money. You could you could adapt this to work on any 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 machine that takes a a track or uh, takes a uh, cassette player. Uh, you could make this work on the old EM game, Haunted House, or the Duck Hunt, the EM Duck Hunt, or whatever. And uh, these will last a long time, and it's not susceptible to failure like a lot of the cassette players are. But by the way. I got, just as of yesterday, I got in contact with a guy, and I'm, I did some wheeling and dealing and some trading, and I am giving him some parts, and he's giving me the original cassette board for Journey. But I think I'm still going to go with this. Anyways, let me play this one more time. If you like what you see, please subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below. Have a good day.